Well, hey there. Welcome to the farm. We have a whole harvest of books for you today. Good morning. I know what you're probably thinking. Yes, I did just finish Anne of Green Gables. No, I'm not okay. This is my support hat. I also just ate my first tomato that I grew all by myself, so I feel like a certified farmer. Silliness aside, and books beside me, we have a book haul today, and this is just crazy. Like, most of these books are from you all, are from you guys, are from you lovely, beautiful people here on this channel, and I cannot thank you enough. I believe I remember who every single one of these books is from, so there are a couple that I think I don't know who they're from because there aren't any notes with them, so if you did send me these and I don't know, please everyone help us find the person because I would like to thank you so so much, but this is just absolutely crazy. Out of this whole huge book haul I have to show you today, I only bought two of them myself. Uh, I think you guys just want to bury me in books, which is fine. I will accept my sarcophagus, my bookcophagus. Thank you for making this channel just such a special place and continually throwing books at my face. It's very loved and very appreciated. So I'm so excited to share these with you guys and talk about them. So let's just get right into it. We have a bunch to get through, so let's get started. All right, so the first book I have to show you here is from Paige. Um, thank you so much, Paige. You lovely, lovely Paige. She said, this book sounds so good. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. And this is The Lady's Paradise by Musilda. I've really, really wanted to read this. I first heard about this one because I was reading um, an historical fiction a few months ago, or like last year, I think. It was The Painted Girls, and they were talking a lot about Emile Zola because a lot of what was going on in that historical fiction was related to his art, um, which just sounded so interesting. But then when I looked him up, uh, The Lady's Paradise sounded like the one that I wanted to read most from him because it sounds like it talks about so many themes that I'm just so interested in. So The Lady's Paradise is all about the invention the celebration, the boom, and the phenomenon that is the department store. So it talks about the consumer symbol that the store stands in for, the revolution that it kind of overtook in both fashion and consumer and capitalist spheres of the world, and it's all set in late 19th century Paris. And it talks about the store and fashion and capitalism and also, of course, women because um, the department store, I think, was such a huge symbol in women's lives specifically and what they perceived maybe as a paradise or freedom or the freedom to buy things and express themselves and wear different kinds of jewelry and fashion and stuff like that. It's more portrayed in Zola's um, book as the conquest of women because we're following Octave Murray, who is the store's owner manager, but he says he wanted her to be queen in his shop he had built this temple for her in order to hold her at his mercy. So it's all about commodification, probably fetishism, commodity fetishism of some sort. So, so interested in this, like so, so interested. I love topics like this. Why do I sound like I've been smoking for 50 years? I love books that talk about uh, consumerism and capitalism and stuff. So this sounds like it's gonna be so interesting, especially because it was published in 1883. So really, really interesting. Yes, thank you so much, Paige. Um, right, okay. When quite the pickle. Oh my gosh. Great. This next book I received from Book of the Month and that is Sky Falling by Mia McKenzie. I really love this cover. Contemporary is not a genre that I ever really gravitate towards unless maybe it's contemporary romance And so I really have no idea where to start with the genre as a whole So I love when like some of them are just plopped into my life that other people think are good You know when people like know what you need and they're just like here you should just read this I love I love when they do that. This one follows a woman named Sky. When she was younger She sold her eggs and since then she has basically just been avoiding all forms of relationships Whether that's any kind basically a relationship, but that all changes when after going solo for so long and so long a young girl pops into her life i believe she's like 12 years old or something um and apparently she is sky's daughter from all those years ago when she sold her eggs and now she can't avoid relationships any longer she also gets entangled with this girl's aunt i believe and then all of a sudden all the relationships that she's been avoiding just start to fall into her life like her brother her other familial relationships romantic relationships and it's all about race queerness family and the relationships that people like sky want to avoid but i think I think this one's all about how in the end you can't really get away from them. So this next one is a gift from Kevin over at Storyglyph. You guys should definitely check out his channel and his Instagram. His photos, out of this world. So he gave me Kristen Lavin's Daughter, Volume 1, The Wreath, or Book 1, by Sigurd Unset. 
really hope I'm saying that one right, but this one sounds so, so cool. Some of these I have talked a little bit about in my vlogs, but most of them I do not think so. Anyway, this one is set in Norway in the 14th century, and we are following our title character, Kristen, as she's going about her life. Um, I believe this is really well done, excruciatingly researched apparently, and I'm so interested in 14th century Norway, just something I know nothing about and would really like to get into. It sounds so naturalistic, so romantic, very idyllic, but then also we follow Kristen's tumultuous relationship with her family because she doesn't want to follow the tradition, traditional path that they set down for her and she wants to get with a different man than what they have planned for her, so that causes some trouble as well. Maybe I'll read you the first sentence, I kind of forgot I wanted to do that <laughs> um oh my goodness this is a first sentence with a lot of words that my mouth is gonna mess up okay chapter one when the earthly goods of ivar gessling the younger of sun Bu, were divided up in the year 1306 his property at sill was given to his daughter regnafrid regnafrid and her husband lavrens bjorgolfsson before that time, they lived at Skog, Lavern's Manor in Folo near Oslo, but now they moved to Jorund, Jorundgard, high on the open slope at Sill. Thank you. All right, this next one is from Sam. Thank you so much. This one is so beautiful. This is called A Hundred Books to Read and Reread. And this is a nonfiction compendium all about a whole bunch of books. That this author recommends and this one is by Michiko Kakutani so oh this one is just so beautiful can we just and then also for a lot of the books they have um really beautiful illustrations of the cover of a lot of books like these are just so stunning for example this one is The Handmaid's Tale we have The Great Gatsby 100 Years of Solitude it made it oh my gosh this is just a gorgeous gorgeous book Sam thank you so so much um, it says books can connect people across time zones and postcodes, across cultures, national boundaries, and historical eras. So Michiko is a literary critic as well, and so she's devised a hundred books um, that are just phenomenal, really good, will serve as inspiration, will probably serve as a good foundation of reading in general, so I'm really excited to go through this, and besides that, it's just like a gorgeous book. It's a book that looks like a bookshelf. Ah. I believe this next one is from a subscriber named John. Thank you so much. He gave me Decline and Fall by Evelyn Waugh. I also love this cover so, so, so much. Um, I'm very interested to read Evelyn Waugh, this one and Brideshead Revisited. These are actually the only titles I know of his, but this one is more a comedy. Well, I believe Brideshead Revisited is more about like going back to school. I believe it's also pretty much like a comedy and a little bit of a farce as well, but this one especially because we are following a man named Paul Pennyfeather and he is sent down from Oxford um, to find himself qualifying for the position of schoolmaster at this castle where he's going to teach. And so you follow him as he meets his colleagues, which I believe is this ragtag assortment of bizarre people who are doing bizarre things. And I think it's just essentially a, probably a very strange commentary on maybe the education system um, and politics and society at the time. So very much looking forward to this. Prelude. Mr. Sniggs, the junior dean, and Mr. Postlethwaite, the domestic bursar, sat alone in Mr. Snig's room overlooking the garden quad at Scone College. All right, this one is another gift from one of you guys. This is Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector. Oh my goodness. I love how tiny this is. Like, it feels so nice to hold. It is so, so tiny. Also, I've never seen a picture of Clarice until I got this book. Um, she is gorgeous. I'm in love with Clarice Lispector just in. So, I've read Agua Viva. I read that last year. That was absolutely crazy. I do want to read everything she has written. I think she's brilliant. Um, she's one of Brazil's most celebrated authors, and I just, I really loved Agua Viva. Like, it was just so crazy. So, Hour of the Star, I think, is a bit different because it has more of a narrative, whereas Agua Viva that I read last year was basically her philosophy, her meditation, and a lot about, like, the present moment and time and love and, like, crazy, crazy ideas and things like that. So, Hour of the Star, our following this woman who lives in the slums of Rio and her job is being a typist. It says Maccabia loves movies, Coca-Cola, and her philandering rat of a boyfriend. It says that she dreams of being Marilyn Monroe, but in reality she is apparently ugly, sickly, underfed, 
not doing super well, but she actually isn't even the narrator of her own story. The narrator of Hour of the Star is a completely different man whose name is Rodrigo, who tries to direct Maccabea's fate, but comes to realize that for all her outward misery, she is inwardly free. So this just sounds incredible. So this sounds incredible because I think it's all about fate as well. So I think it's gonna be just absolutely dazzling. It begins, all the world began with a yes. Yeah, we all know it wouldn't be a book haul as well if I didn't show some new editions of Phantom of the Opera. In my defense, a lovely, a lovely human being sent them to me. So thank you so much for uh, fueling my phantom addiction. Anyway, um, these two copies are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for sending them my way. Like they just, it just makes me so happy. So this first one I'd never seen before. So this is what it looks like. Um, yep, I think I talked about Phantom of the Opera. I, I kind of haven't talked about it for a few videos. So if you don't know, let me say it again. One of my favorite books. <laughs> um, but this is by Gaston Lefou and I just love this cover. It reminds me of like a kind of twisted Cinderella. I just love like the blue dress, the chandelier, the staircase. And <laughs> I love how big and jarring his face is on the cover and how it creates that kind of line. I really, really love it. This is the Dalmatian Press edition, I believe. Thank you so much. This is so gorgeous. I love it. I love these like cartoon or illustrated ones as well. I think they're beautiful. And then this next one is actually one that I didn't have, which is surprising because it is the Penguin Black Classic edition. And this um, actually comes with the cover art of the original edition when it first came out of Phantom of the Opera when it was published in 1910. Um, so it has the phantom looking extremely dapper and also extremely dead on the cover. So thank you so, so much. I cannot wait to reread this. And now I have literally too many options to choose from when I want to reread it. This next book um, is just dazzling because I, for some reason, had never heard of it before. This one made it all the way to me from Germany. So thank you so much, Elena. Um, thank you. I screamed when I opened this because this is two Prague stories by Rilke. I had never heard of these before. Um, actually, I think I'd heard of them vaguely on like a list, but I've never been able to find them anywhere. I don't know how often they are translated into English. And besides that, they are some of, of I believe, his earliest works and his earlier stories. So this is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous copy of his two stories in here. I'm so looking forward to this. It's just, it's just so stunning. Thank you so much for thinking to send this to me. And then you open it up and he just is staring you right in the face. So for those who don't know, Rilke was born in Prague. So I believe these stories form a lot of his memories from childhood and his growing up. He does call it sheer past homeland and childhood, both of them long remote form its background. It is made of half forgotten things dear to me and thus they enrich me. Um, for all we possess of the past is that which we love. Oh, I'm so excited. So, so, so utterly just, I want to fall into these so badly and just see more of where he grew up because a lot of his work isn't personal really, which I find so interesting. He rarely ever talks of very like intimate details of his personal life. Like in his letters, he'll possibly do that. But most of his, of course, well-known works, letters to a young poet, the Duino elegies and lots of his poetry. It's not like intimate details of his own life. He usually like looks way beyond that. And so it's so interesting to me that these two Prague stories um, exist and are probably very connected with a lot of his own life and stuff like that. So very interesting. This next one is another pick from Book of the Month for June, and that is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This is an adult fantasy retelling of Arthurian legend, um, which is so interesting. I think this is a huge trend, I believe, that's been coming up in a lot of fiction. For example, we've had Legendborn, we have Kirsten White, um, The Guinevere Deception, and stuff like that. And so I think a lot of authors are now jumping on Board, which is cool because I love Arthurian legend. Um, so Half Sick of Shadows is more following, I believe, the woman in the story. The synopsis is really, really vague, but it does feature Arthur, Guinevere, Lancelot, the whole gang, but it's about Elaine, who I believe has the power to prophesy the future. But once again, I don't think anyone listens to her. So um, that is that one. Let me read you the first sentence. Chapter one, uh, I will die drowning. It has always been known. This next one I found in a little library book box and I would love to do a whole other video soon because I found some new ones that I want to share with you guys. And so I picked up Ragged Company by Richard Wagamese. This is a Canadian novel by an Ojibwe author and I'm very much looking forward to reading this because this one is about a group of chronically homeless people who are known as the Ragged Company. So one night when it's super, super cold and um, they're freezing, they escape into, I don't know if it's an abandoned 
abandoned movie theater no it's just an old movie theater and so they all huddle in there together this group of them and inside they meet this man named granite who is a journalist but he's kind of fallen out of his love of journalism he's not sure what he's doing anymore and so they spend the night there but in the movie theater they find an old lottery ticket that hasn't been redeemed and it turns out that the lottery ticket is the winning ticket for 13 million dollars um, unfortunately none of them can claim the money because they don't have a fixed address and so they enlist granite to kind of help them with this and then they form a connection it just sounds like it's going to be so incredible i believe it's set during one night i'm not sure chapter one is called one for the dead it was Irwin that started all the dying. We have another Canadian book with small game hunting at the local coward gun club by Megan Gale Coles. I really, really want to read this one this summer or at least before the year runs out. Like I really want to get to this one. It sounds incredible. Some Canadian Gothic, some Newfoundland Gothic, which isn't something I've been able to experience before. This was such a lovely gift and it came with a really cute note from Jenna. Thank you so much, Jenna. Um, she knows I've been wanting to read more Canadian literature. So she sent this one really lovingly my way. So like I said, this one is set in Newfoundland, this time in February, and I believe a lot of the action centers around this gun club or this bar where a lot of what's going down in the town is taking place. We are following the cast of people inside the club and they all have differing things going on. I believe there's tragedy, there's betrayal, there's bitterness, there's fate, and we also have Olivia who's kind of watching it all from afar. I don't believe she's native to Newfoundland, she comes from the north. It says her debut novel rips into the inner lives of a wicked cast of characters building toward a climax that will shred perceptions and force a reckoning because I believe there's a lot of lies going on, there's tons of abuse, um, and there's lots festering, I believe, under the surface of this town as well. The first sentence is pretty bleak. It says, Olive waits below the sad mural painted in memory of some long ago drowned boy. This next one was a really lovely gift from Mary at Mary Among Stories. Thank you so much. Um, she sent this with such a lovely note for... Um, 100k and I just your notes always make me tear up I don't know how you do it she has such a gift of saying exactly like what you need to hear in your life but she sent me Istanbul Memories and the City by Orhan Pamuk I have become a little bit obsessed with Pamuk even though I've only read one of his books which was Snow um, one of my favorite books of the year so far and so I really want to read everything by him I know there's tons of really really famous ones of his like My Name is Red but I'm also interested in a lot of what he writes about in his own life and so Istanbul which is more of like a Nonfiction memoir all about his memories growing up and the city in general seemed like a good place to start before delving deeper into his fiction just so I could maybe understand, get a bit of a better perspective, and just you know get some more information about where he's coming from. It's an intimate and panoramic view of one of the world's greatest cities. His portrait of his city is thus also a self portrait, refracted by memory and the melancholy that all Istanbul's share. Sadness that comes of living amid the ruins of a lost empire. Yeah, I'm really excited because this is compared to James Joyce as well as Borges when they're talking about um, respectively Dublin and Buenos Aires. So, oh, I'm really, really looking forward to this. Thank you so much, Mary. Chapter one, from a very young age, I suspected there was more to my world than I could see. Somewhere in the streets of Istanbul, in a house resembling ours, there lived another Orhan, so much like me, that he could pass for my twin even my double. This next book is a gift from Lily. Thank you so much. This was so kind of you. Um, and this is The Coincidence Makers, which I had never heard of. Um, it just arrived in my PO box and it sounds exactly, it sounds like a match made in heaven, Lily. Honestly, thank you so much. This is by Yuav Blum. And this is a book all about coincidence, fate, determinism, math, statistics. I believe it bends a lot of those like science principles that I love so much. Well, not strictly necessarily being science fiction, but essentially this is about a group of people who make things happen that maybe you thought just happened by accident or it was a coincidence or you think just happened because of the general sway and nature of the universe. Like you just spilled your coffee, you missed your train or something like that. So this book explores the group of people that make all those things happen, which just sounds so cool. So they work for a secret organization devoted to creating and carrying out coincidences. So we kind of find out why, like what they're working towards, what the goal is, what the end game of making all these things happen. It's also a love story and a mystery and I believe a little bit of a thriller. Uh, part one, look at the line of time. Of course, it is only an illusion. Time is a space. 
not align. This next book is also from Book of the Month and that is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I was so surprised at myself for loving The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo as much as I did, so I was so ecstatic when this arrived because I would love to give more Taylor Jenkins Reid a try, especially because Malibu Rising follows some of the characters in The Seven Husbands. They're not like strictly related, you don't have to read one to read the other, but this is set in the 1980s and we're following four siblings who I believe every summer throw like the big biggest party ever, but on this particular party and on this particular year, Malibu catches on fire. So I believe in typical Taylor Jenkins Reid historical fiction fashion, we bounce back and forth, maybe not in an interview format this time, but certainly going back to events in our characters' lives. I believe there's a lot of secrets between the four siblings and we're probably examining each of them in turn. And I'm just, I'm so excited. Like she creates such a compelling story that just feels like real, like so real, um, especially the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo did show that is Malibu Rising. Next, we have a really, really gorgeous copy of The Murmur of Bees by Sofia Segovia. This is one of the ones that I believe, I don't know who sent this because there wasn't a note and unless I missed a comment, I think on a vlog, I haven't seen anyone um, reveal themselves to be the mysterious sender offer of The Murmur of Bees. So if this is you, thank you so much. This is set in a small Mexican town amid the backdrop of revolution as well as the influenza of 1918. Um, there's a lot of magical realism in here because we follow a small child who I don't know if he can speak to bees but he's always surrounded by a blanket of bees a swarm of bees that don't disappear even as he grows up and so he is adopted by a family who brings him up and stuff like that and as he gets older I believe he starts to have this power that when he closes his eyes he can see what no one else can visions of the future what's going to come to pass and it just sounds crazy so um I think I'm gonna love this this is probably like a five star ish prediction so should be pretty good that early morning in October the baby's wails mingled with the cool wind that blew through the trees with the bird song and with the night's insects saying their farewell. Next we have The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I'm so excited for this one. I read The Silent Patient a few months ago, loved it, and so when I found out that he has now come out, 2021 release with a dark academia in which we're following murder um, and someone investigating it, and we follow our protagonist who is investigating these murders and she believes that the prime suspect is the handsome, mysterious Greek tragedy professor at Cambridge. There's also a lot of Greek myth, I believe, weaved into here. It is called The Maidens, and The Silent Patient did have a lot of Greek, um, specifically tragedy in it as well, which was so interesting. I just thought The Silent Patient was so well done. Um, there were parts that I could definitely critique, but I think on the whole, it just dazzled me. It really impressed me, especially the deeper, like, psychological um, trauma that it talked about, trauma in general death and like all of these themes were just so expertly wound together and it really felt like deep and dark and also strangely calling to you as the reader. Uh, I've seen glowing raving reviews of The Maiden so maybe even as the Dark Academics Book Club we could potentially pick this one up. So we shall see. This one I also uh, don't know who this is from, it didn't have a note, but this is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I've heard a lot about this one. This is science fiction set in the far future and we're following a group of people who are piloting this spaceship and they have to make like the most dangerous journey um, or something like that in the galaxy to get somewhere. But this won the Hugo Award, which um, is very impressive. So I am really interested in this. So if you sent me a little angry planet, I would like to very happily thank you. So this crew in question is offered a job to build a hyperspace tunnel to a distant planet. And so they're offered so much money. Um, they've of course lived comfortably for years afterwards, but that is if they survive the trip, if they survive the job, and if they don't kill each other, because apparently um, they're not getting along on board. Next one is from Myra, and this is The Blood Spell by CJ Redwine. Thank you so much for sending this to me. This is one, um, this is one of my favorite young adult books of all time, but also one of my favorite reads of 2020. I listened to the audiobook and as soon as I finished it, I just knew that I wanted to have it in my life as a physical book because I want to reread it for sure. Read it with my own eyes this time. This is a Cinderella retelling. It's one of the most magical little books I've read. Like it was honestly so impressive, the detail to kind of the world, the fantasy, specifically through the lens of food um, and magic and just the whole atmosphere of this book felt like a summer breeze on like a beachside 
cottage with flowers and bread baking in the oven and fairies. It was just absolutely beautiful. I don't want to go into the specifics of the Cinderella retelling because it is pretty true to the original, but there's also a few um, darker twists I want to say in here as well. So I really, really enjoyed this. Would highly recommend if you're looking for a summary good book, but with also a lot of fairy tale elements in there as well so thank you so so much I, I just i'm so excited to get into this again next up this is a gift from a subscriber named Catherine. thank you so much thank you so much this is castle in the air by diana win jones i'm so happy about this one. Oh my goodness this is the sequel to hell's moving castle um it doesn't contain any of the same characters but i cannot wait to read this i love the details on this cover as well but this one we are following this young is he a young man or like a boy i think in this one we are following a carpet merchant named abdullah he dreams of becoming a prince um, and eventually I believe he is pushed off on this journey to rescue someone called the flower in the night. I'm not sure if that is a person or what, but I'm really interested um, in finding out. I just think this is going to be so fun, especially because Howl's Moving Castle was just gorgeous. Um, such like an inspiration in my life, honestly. So I cannot wait to read all of Diana Wynne Jones books because I've heard glowing reviews of like the rest of her backlist as well. So thank you so much, Catherine. This is just such a welcome, warm, beautiful, little cozy addition to my shelves. All right. And then finally here, these are the two books that I picked up for myself. They're both manga, so I did decide to get volume two of An Incurable Case of Love just because I want to continue on probably at least one or two more before I decide if this is a series that I want to continue with, but I have been talking a little bit about this one, I think. This one we are following a nurse and the whole reason her only motivation for going to nursing school and for being placed at the hospital where she works is that she is in love with the doctor there, Dr. Tendo, um, but he is not what she bargained for. He's extremely strict, so severe, not a very nice person, honestly, in all reality, but we kind of see their work dynamic. It's really funny. Um, and it was just a, like a little bit sweet, but also just really nice to kind of follow her day to day working at the hospital, what she's going through. And then of course this paired with like the ridiculous relationship between her and Dr. Tendo that she's trying to bring about. And then this one I saw is by the same author. These are both by Mackie and Joji. This is volume one of Happy Marriage question mark exclamation mark i heard someone say this one was like a little bit better because i did enjoy this but like there wasn't anything that much deeper to it for me like i didn't enjoy it as much as say sailor moon or other manga that i've read so i decided to give maki and joji another shot with this one this one is about an arranged marriage between the daughter of um her father that's usually how that works it says in order to help her father she agrees to an arranged marriage with the company president a man she doesn't know at the request of hokotu who is the man she's marrying like his grandfather so both companies want them to get together to i guess form an alliance or to stop the rivalry or something like that um and so she agrees but she doesn't think too much of it she just thinks it's like a contractual thing she's like oh it's just plainly in writing whereas he doesn't agree he like takes the marriage seriously so i think it's about them having to come to terms with that and it just sounds like it's gonna be a wild ride once again but yeah those are the two newest additions to the manga shelf as well but that is everything thank you so much for watching <laughs> um and also sending me these like it's just i just don't know what did I do? Thank you so much, um, you guys, for sending me so many books. Like, it just blows my mind. I don't know what I did, <laughs> um, but just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish we could all meet up and have, like, a wonderful little picnic where instead of food, we all bring each other books and we sit in the park and talk. All I can say for now is thank you, and I hope you enjoyed. I cannot wait to share my thoughts on some of these, and hopefully get some fun reading vlogs featuring out your picks in the next video as well. So thank you so much, and I will see you very soon in my next video. I hope you're doing fabulous. I hope you're having a really great, wonderful day or night or evening, and if not, tomorrow. Let's make it tomorrow. So, ciao.